In a non-spoilery way, Dresden finds out he actually he has a child by Susan Rodriguez, who he had a, a steamy encounter with uh, way back in book five, and uh, finds out that he actually has a daughter who's about eight years old. Not only that, but that she's been taken by the Red Court. He has to do something about it because nobody else is going to. And he tries to go get some help from the White Council, which does him as much good as it always does, which is to say they make things worse. And after that, then everything's going to be up to him. So he's going to get to find out exactly how far he's willing to go to save his daughter and exactly what he's willing to sacrifice and give up to do so. And Dresden's been offered so many things over the years. This is one of those books where all of these old deals are much more tempting than they ever have been before. He's got to decide. He may not have the same options he had before, just calmly turning away from it. Or now if he does, uh, it might be his little girl who dies. I wanted him to, be, to get hit with absolutely the worst person he could possibly need to protect. He has so far resisted all these offers that have come along. I wanted to give him the absolute worst, or the absolute best, maybe, reason uh, uh, to get over uh, uh, his moral objections to what he's had before or to force himself to, uh, through them uh, in order to protect a life. Harry's always had uh, this real cavalier complex, especially where, where, where women are concerned. It isn't a survival trait for him, but he's got it anyway. You know, not only was he going to be protecting this child, this child is also female. And that, that, that makes a difference in his thinking. Um, it isn't rational, but it is part of who he is. Harry would never be going, ah, it's a boy, screw him, but I mean, it's not just his child, it's a little girl who needs protection. It's something that can make him change his mind about decisions he's made before. Writing this book was like, uh, I was finally getting to pull the trigger on so many things I've been building for so long. I felt like the special effects guy at Tropic Thunder, you know, just having way too much fun with my job. When in the process of writing The Dresden Files did I know the plot of changes? That was when I first set up the story, which was originally for a class project, so uh, it would be about 1996. Because I, I kind of planned out the entire story arc of the series. I knew the general events of it, specifically how things were going to work out with Susan and so on. It was something I adjusted to on the fly, but I knew uh, this was going to be kind of a, a milestone moment in his uh, wizardly career. Absolutely. I mean, that was one, one of the things. It was uh, supposed to be indicative. Uh, the same with the do. This is my promotional do. I write linear, linearly from beginning to end, uh, chapter one to chapter whatever, to the end of the book. I don't think I'm smart enough to do it the other way. I, I just have to, to go one bit at a time. Oh, I have fun with so many characters. I got to do some more Mab in this book, and Mab is always one of my favorites to write. Mouse is also great fun to write. Sonya, the last knight of the cross, who's in operation, got to show up. And there's always fun writing Sonya with this Russian accent in my head. Yes, this is a statue of a foo dog, or at least a replica of a statue. Mouse himself is a temple dog. The way he looks in my head is, is he really he looks a lot more like a, a Russian Caucasian. Uh, the Soviets bred them to, as security dogs from Tibetan Mastiffs and uh, uh, I think uh, St. Bernard's, but uh, uh, Mouse looks quite somewhat like this. If you scale up a, a Tibetan Mastiff, you get to Mouse size, then that's about where, where he is. He gets to take part in, in the adventure in this one and, and have a lot of fun as well. You'll get to find out more about Mouse and exactly where he's from and exactly the kind of the kinds of things he can do and why. But you know, I don't want to spoil that for anybody. That's for the future, so. Several people have asked me if I could ever write something from Mouse's point of view, and I said, well, I would, but you know, then the reader would know too much. Mouse is quite a bit smarter sometimes, I think, than Harry in, in some ways. One of the things I wanted to do for the Dresden Files was I wanted to create a world, not where I was going to pick one mythology or the other that was the correct one, but where they could all be true and yet not true at the same time. Uh, something that could encompass uh, uh, virtually anything anyone believed and to explain how it got to be that way. Uh, to make it feasible for them to exist side by side. Uh, so that I could uh, be playing around with, uh, with demigods from one culture struggling against divine beings of another. So 
Changes is pretty close. It's right up there between Changes and Deadbeat because zombie T-Rex. I mean, what else do you need to say about Deadbeat? That was an enormous amount of fun to write, but uh, Changes was also uh, extremely uh, gratifying for me because there were so many things that had been building up and building up over the course of the entire series before uh, that I finally got to make happen here. I don't really write the dialogue thinking about the audiobooks, mostly because I, I have only the vaguest understanding of, of how that gets put together. I'm not an audio performer myself. Even if I tried to put it together for the audiobooks, I'm not sure I wouldn't be making it worse. Uh, so mostly I just try and write like I always have. I probably should apologize to James for that sometime. I should research the audio thing and see if I can't write something friendlier. Uh, yes, there will. Dynamite is going to be busy producing the se second four issues of, of Stormfront, which should be out uh, in the next few months. And then after that, they're going to go on to Full Moon, and they're already trying to convince me to write another original story like Welcome to the Jungle was. I'm really tempted, because the comic book, writing the comics is fun. Uh, some of the things that I've seen, there's enormous arguments about who should get one of the Swords of the Cross, and which person should be wielding them, and uh, who might have stolen uh, uh, Thorned Namshiel's coin, and who might, who's actually a secret Denarian now, walking among the, the members of the, of the cast. Of course, who Harry should wind up with romantically is always a huge uh, discussion that's, on, that's been on the boards. I'm sure that there are many, many others, the exact way magic works, you know, what Harry should be doing to, to manufacture uh, the most advantageous gear that he could use for himself, and so on. At one point in the books, uh, the characters are, are arguing who they are in the Fellowship of the Ring. There's some fairly unusual decisions made about who is playing who in the discussion inside the books. The beta readers all had their own take on it. There was this huge discussion on, uh, well, if we were casting Lord of the Rings from the Dresden Files, who would be who? Uh, I'm not even sure who would be Frodo. I don't know, it might be Murphy, uh, because I think everybody there would be afraid to cast Murphy as, as the dwarf. I think uh, she'd have something to say about that. So I know if I was standing near, near Murphy, I wouldn't suggest she should be, she should be the dwarf. Sam was really the hero of the, of the Lord of the Rings uh, in, in a great many ways. He was the one who really mattered. But yeah, they, we had a good time. Uh, I had a good time writing that scene, and the betas had a great time arguing it, and I'm sure that argument will carry on to the, to the uh, fan forum. So uh, if you want to drop by jim-butcher.com and, and check out our fan forums, you might be able to throw in your own two bits in the discussion. I hope so. I, I do want to be able to answer all the questions at the end of the series, mostly because I'm fundamentally a lazy writer, so I don't want to write something that I don't use for something later on. All the, the threads I've got hanging, I want to make sure I get them all you know, tied up nice and neat before we're done. Uh, book 12 is not the last book, so for the people who are asking, uh, fear not, there will be a book 13. They, the publisher's already paid me for it, so I have to write it. Look for it next year. Thank you.